within the banking tab, you've got your first item is the banking. This is where kind of like the bank feeds are located. If you're under the business view, it's a little bit different. It's under bookkeeping. As we saw before, it's under bookkeeping. And then you've got your transactions up top. And that's where your bank transactions are. It's already set up here because they have a few that have been set up already. So that's that's where we'll we'll go and we'll set them up here. And then we've got our instructions to set it up. Usually the actual connection of the bank feeds is pretty easy. That's not the difficult part of bank feeds. The difficult part that people get messed up on is that they pull in all the information, they get the connection right, but then they have all this stuff in what I would call bank feed limbo and they don't know how to add it to the system. They get overwhelmed at this point in time because they don't know the accounting system. And so it's, it's useful to first have a understanding of what's going on a little bit before, but we can build it from scratch here even if, if we don't. So it's gonna say automatic income and expense tracking, save hours of work by tracking finances automatically. You can see how it works with the video if you want. Number one, connect bank or credit card to get started. Number two, review and add your transactions. Number three, see how your business is uh, doing. So we can either upload transactions, that's the way we're gonna do it in a future presentations, but most likely most people are gonna connect if this was their actual business. Now I recommend if you're following along with a practice problem, with your own data that you download the data from the, your financial institution the way we're doing here, which we'll show you in a future presentation and then we'll upload it. Uh, if you're running this live and this is your, you're on the go and you're following along to figure out how you're gonna set up the bank feeds, then of course most people would connect directly to the bank. Just make sure that you have your cutoff dates correct in terms of where you wanna start your, your data that you're pulling into the system. If it's a new company file, it's pretty straightforward. You're gonna pull in all the information into the system. But if you have a lot of back data, then the question is, where are your bank feeds gonna start? And make sure you get that cutoff date lined up. Sometimes that's easier to do by first downloading the data, at least for the start, and then connecting after that point. Okay, so then they have a ton of different banks and financial institutions. It used to be that, that the, only the big banks were kind of here. And then, but now all like a lot of banks are, are included and even PayPal and whatnot is included here, which is really, really nice because because PayPal used to be like an intermediary type of thing. Now people are using PayPal as basically a bank. They're paying a lot of the expenses through the PayPal. And so it's nice to have that there as well. So you can, you can show more down here, here to find your institution. You can type in up top, whatever Chase, let's say bank, and then Obviously you can go into your Chase Bank and then it says sign into the account. Start by connecting your Chase Bank account with Intuit, uh, the makers of QuickBooks and so on. So then you've got your connection issue. So when you go through the connection, each financial institution might have a different verification process, but most of them are pretty straightforward these, these days. So there's gonna be an online verification. You're gonna have to log into the account and so on to make sure that it's an accurate uh, connection and then you should be good to go. Worst case scenario, you might have to call your financial institution and say that you're using QuickBooks Online, but usually it's pretty pretty streamlined for most of the big banks. Uh, and it's, more, it's getting more and more streamlined for many smaller banks as well. And then of course, once that is done, I won't go through that process now because we're gonna upload the transactions and I'll show you how to do that in a future presentation, how to download the transactions from the bank, how to get how to get this data file or a CSV file that possibly you can use to then upload to the system. But once you do upload it, then we will end up with the items in the, the banking transactions for, for the bank feeds, such as this, and we'll have our card up top and then all this information will be in bank feed limbo, which is what I called before so it's waiting for that added information, accounts to be assigned to, vendors and customers, so it can then be used to pull into the creation of the financial statements, balance sheet, income statement, or used to verify, double check the transactions we have entered for cash, helping us with the bank reconciliation process.